Hello from the land of TV, this is King Cool, and I'm making this video to show how I make my episodes of King Cool's Distracted Movie Reviews. Nobody has asked for this, but I felt like making it. Uh, I hope to point out a few issues that I had making video content for anyone who might want to do this in the future. The most common way I make a review is with Fraps. Now, Fraps only works with games that use DirectX or OpenGL. I start uh, by playing a game in Fraps, which will record your microphone automatically if you tell it to. I just have to turn down the in-game sound so it won't compete with my dialogue. If I forget to do this, the sound's stuck the way it is and I'm screwed. To record my voice, I wear my headphones under a small headset because the headset's speakers are horrible. When I'm finished rambling, I take the video file and open it in Virtual Dub. Virtual Dub is free editing software. It's fairly rudimentary, especially if you're used to Final Cut Pro, like me. But it works well. I cut out chunks of video where I lose the plot or I fail to say something constructive, and then I save it as an AVI with an XVID compression. Don't forget to set a compression in the video drop-down menu, because otherwise you will have this humongous and completely uncompressed file. Something else you should know about Fraps, which is if you uh, play too long and the file you record gets too big, somewhere past 3 gigs, it'll start a new file and continue without interrupting. Now, thankfully you can append these segments together uh, with Append AVI segment in the File dropdown in Virtual Dub. In fact, if you rename them File 1, File 2, File 3, etc., and you tell it to auto-detect additional segments by file name, Virtual Dub will attach all of them to the same timeline. The problem with this is that you can't attach files unless just about everything about them is identical. They must be the same resolution, they must have the same number of audio channels and streams, they must be compressed with the same codec. Basically, it's best if the video files were made with the same program and in the same game. After it's all saved, I take that file and open it in a program some of you probably don't know about called Aegis Sub, which is a subtitling program. I add the titles and random notes, like when I make a cut in the video. I open the video in the video drop-down, then open the audio from the video in the audio drop-down. I write out the subtitles where I need them. Now, I, I want to make a note about Aegis Sub. When writing out the, their place on the timeline, it's overwrite only, as in, you can't just select it and delete it. You have to click on the beginning of the timecode and type out all the numbers, overwriting them. Then, you have to click commit before clicking away to anything else, or it will forget what you just did. After doing that about a thousand times, you'll start to do it automatically. When you're done, you click Export Subtitles, save them, probably as the same file name as the video, but it's up to you, and then go back to Virtual Dub, open the video, go into Filters, and apply the subtitles. I use TextSub, which is from VS Filter by Gabest, I believe is how that's pronounced. There is a built-in thing called Subtitler, but when I was looking stuff up, someone said, never use this. Apparently, it sucks. It might still work okay for what you need it to do. Apply the subtitle filter, and if you play the output pane, which is the second play button, you should see the subtitles on the video in the right pane. Save the video again in the XVID codec, possibly uh, reducing the quality a bit so it won't take forever to upload, and then you're done. <laughs> now, if I want to play a DOS game, I use the built-in DOSBox Capture feature by pressing Control, Alt, and F5. Then I start recording audio in a reliable audio recording program. Now I happen to use Goldwave. I record the review, then I stop the microphone recording, then the video capture, and save the recorded dialogue as a wave. You want the video to be longer than the audio of your voice, and I'll explain why in a sec. Then, I knit them together in Audacity. You can't open the DOSBox videos in Audacity, you'll just get a bunch of horrible noise. And since Audacity has the habit of crashing, I don't like to record in it. You can open a DOSBox video in Gold Wave, and then save it as a wave, and then open that wave in Audacity. Then open the dialogue in the same project, and line it up so they match. To sync them up, while you're recording both parts, but before you start the review, either hum with the music or say something in time with a sound in the game, that will give you a mark to line up the sound. I forgot to do this when I did Boppin, so I lined it up when I cursed about missing one of the shots. Save this as a WAV file. Now the reason you want the video sound to be longer than the voice file is that the entire voice file fits within the audio of the video. And when you replace it, you won't have to do any tricky cutting to make it sure it's the same size as the original video. Trust me, it's a pain in the butt. To import it into the video, you click 
audio from other source in the audio dropdown in Virtual Dub. The thing is, Virtual Dub doesn't natively understand the codec that DOSBox uses, which is the ZMBV, or Zipped Motion Block Video codec. Before you go looking all over creation trying to find the codec that will work, go to your DOSBox folder, and there should be a folder called ZMBV. There are three files, one called ZMBV.inf, not ZMBV.dll. Right-click ZMBV.inf and click Install. Windows should take care of the rest, then Virtual Dub will understand DOSBox files perfectly. After that, editing is the same with fraps. One thing I will recommend is to be aware of the native size of your recording, and if necessary, increase the size of the video. You can do this with the resize filter and double it if you need to. This is why the subtitles in Episode 3 for Event Horizon look like crap. The source file was only 320 by 240 because that's what Bopman runs at, and I should have blown it up, and I didn't, I was lazy, I should have fixed it, but I didn't. And if I want to record a non-fraps and non-DOS game, of which the only prevalent example I can think of are Flash games that run in a browser, I need to use a real screen capping software like either Camp Studio or Camtasia. Now Camp Studio is free, but it's kind of dicey. I used it for the Incredible Machine video. There's usually some sound lag when I mess with it. I'm not really a fan, but it is free, so you can't really complain. Camtasia has a 30-day trial that I'm currently 10 days in, uh, so I thought I'd give it a shot. And, uh, I used it to episode 6, which was uh, used cars to record the Flash game Enough Plumbers, which, by the way, is really fun. Um, it records the screen quite well and records the microphone at the same time. The first problem was that if I didn't make the file a Camtasia project, the system audio, the game audio, wouldn't be included, and only my voice would be there. Now, I didn't want to have to edit it in Camtasia, that's what I learned Virtual Dub to do, so I exported it as a regular AVI anyway and tried to save a Camtasia movie as an XFID AVI, like all my other videos, and it didn't work. I can save it as an uncompressed movie, but I can't compress it with XFID, so for Camtasia, Virtual Dub is out of the picture, sadly. Camtasia's UI is a lot like Windows Movie Maker. It's fairly limited, but you can get it to do what you want if you're not worried about how it looks. That's why all the titles are in that little bubble. I might consider buying Camtasia, but for 300 bucks, as opposed to $37 for Fraps, and the limited amount of use I would have for it, I don't think I'll be messing around with it much after the free trial. It works good, but it's just not what I need. Finally, if I want to forgo my PC entirely, I can make an episode on my Macintosh in Final Cut Pro. Now, I've used Final Cut Pro for about four years now, and I know it pretty well. When I was first making videos, I figured out a way to capture footage from a console. I have this splitter that I use to keep all my consoles connected to the television, and it works by having six sets of three female RCA ports, five for each of the consoles, and a sixth to go to the television. My camera, a Canon Optura 30 camcorder, has a cord that you normally use to connect it to a television, to play the footage you've recorded, but there's a function that lets you record to tape in this mode. So I hooked up the cord to the RCA ports that normally go to the television, and presto, I'm capturing footage from a real console. Yay! This technique has a few disadvantages, primarily that I have to watch the game on the tiny 2.5 inch screen on the camera. I finally got around to buying a little, like, RCA split coupling, or what, I don't know what the thing's called, but I put the yellow one, the video, from the console in the bottom plug and plug the yellows leading to the television and to the camera into the two ends of the fork. That way I can have the game on the TV while it's still recording out of the camera. Now I don't think there's much in the way of lost brightness by splitting the video. The TV does look dimmer, but the footage never seemed to, and it's certainly not at half brightness like you might think if it was splitting the picture. So I should probably actually take a peek at that. Huh, that was fairly conclusive. But what about sound, I hear you say? Well, the camera has onboard speakers that work fine for hearing the game. It's not totally necessary for them to come out of the speakers in the television. I record my commentary in Gold Wave as normal. To sync them up, I will start recording the commentary first. In this case, it doesn't matter if the microphone track is longer than the video track, because I can cut them up easier in Final Cut than I can in Audacity. And I lean the camera in right near the camera and make noise in the game that the mic will pick up so I can sync them in Final Cut Pro quite easy. I can do all sorts of fancy stuff in Final Cut that I can't do in Virtual Dub or any of the other programs, but I don't want the episodes made on the Mac 
to be bogged down in gimmicky editing, nor do I want them to totally outshine their counterparts made in Windows. Currently, I'm experimenting to see what looks the best and what isn't too showy. The other advantage to Final Cut is that I can actually use my camera as a camera, which there's no way to do that on my Windows machine. If the inanimate players are going to show up, they will have to be one made in Final Cut Pro. The videos from the Mac don't work in Virtual Dub. They both work in Windows Movie Maker, but that's not really a solution. The biggest disadvantage to working in Final Cut is the extra time it takes. Not the editing, that's normally quite swift, but the capturing of the footage. The saving the video in quick time compression to stop the creeping green that plagued me during Freeze This. Just this step takes about two hours in which I can't do anything else. Burning a CD to put the file on, copying the file to the PC, and uploading it. My Mac doesn't go online, it predates the whole wireless web thing by about a year or two. It takes a while. I think that's everything. I hope you found this informative, and I hope someone out there will dodge a few hurdles that I have terribly stumbled over in my efforts to learn how to make videos. Thank you all for watching. This is King Cool. Drive home safe. This video was made in Windows Movie Maker, which is probably the most painless way to make a slideshow like this.